in this lecture we will see polarization of an antenna. Now, polarization is actually in antenna if it is a radiating antenna or transmitting antenna uh, polarization has one meaning if it is a receiving antenna polarization has a slightly different meaning. Now, please remember that polarization of an antenna uh, means that uh, one thing is polarization is different in different directions. So, when we say polarization of an antenna, we should also specify in which direction polarization we are talking of. Just the concept of directivity gain etcetera that generally we say an antenna has so much directivity and the antenna has so much gain, but it is with respect to certain angle or certain direction solid angle that means theta phi direction. Similarly, polarization is also that that polarization of, um, of an antenna in a given direction is defined as the polarization of the radiated wave when the antenna is excited. That means, whatever wave it is radiating the polarization is for that. So, to understand antenna's polarization we need to understand what do we mean by polarization of a wave that means an electromagnetic wave what is the polarization is this uh, what is the definition of polarization of that. Now, before going there I now want to say that what is the reverse case that means if the antenna is uh, receiving antenna what is the meaning of polarization of the antenna. So, in that case it is the polarization of the incident wave or incoming wave to the antenna from a given direction which results in maximum available power at the antenna terminals. What do I mean by that? So, this is a receiving case that means, I have a receiving antenna. So, this is my antenna the wave is coming. So, I am saying okay, from this direction I want to see. So, this wave what is its polarization provided I get maximum power maximum available power here. So, if not then there will be a mismatch there will be a loss etcetera. Now, as I said if the direction is not stated because many times you will see that ok it is a so and so polarized antenna that means, he is not specifying theta phi in that case the polarized the direction is taken to be the direction of the maximum gain. So, antenna's maximum gain that has a direction because gain is a theta phi function. So, gain without theta phi means in a maximum of that function. So, in that direction the polarization is talked when nothing is specified. Now, then let me recall what is the polarization of an wave electromagnetic wave actually it was taught in electromagnetic theory. So, it is that property of a radiated electromagnetic wave which describes the time varying direction and relative magnitude of the electric field vector of the wave. So, what is the polarization of the of an electromagnetic wave? It is the time varying direction and relative magnitude of the electric field vector. Basically, in mathematical terms we can say the locus of the electric field vector with time. So, the it is basically the locus of the end point of the electric field vector at a fixed location in space and the sense in which that locus is traced 
as observed along the direction of propagation. Now, these are actually exact terms, but to understand that let me draw a plane wave. Okay. Suppose, a plane wave generally what we say that the plane wave electric field vector is something like this. So, this is the envelope of the electric field vector, envelope of E field. So, obviously that means, this is a you see special description of the wave. That means, at a particular time I am seeing that at this point electric vector is like this, at this point electric vector is like this etcetera, etcetera. Okay. Now, instead if I take a if I fix a point and go on see that what is the polarization of or what is the electric field vector as time progresses. You see I will get a picture like this. you see suppose any point you fix. So, here if I fix I think you will agree that I will get suppose I am at this point I am here. So, I will see something here next moment it will rise a bit then it will again be like this then it will 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 be like this, then it will be like this, then it will be like this, then after that again it will be like this, like this. You see the this is for a plane wave obviously, I have drawn a plane wave, but instead of drawing it generally we uh, always draw the thing as a special variation. But if we see time variation, this electric field vector, its end, how it traces, what it is tracing? It is tracing a line. So, it is a linear polarization. Now, instead of this, this also is a linear polarization case. You see, it not be always like this vertical or horizontal, it can be something like this. this is also a case of linear polarization. This is also a case of linear polarization, but linear polarization again is a special case. Actually all things need not be linear. So, polarization it basically most generally it should be classified as elliptical. Why? Because this E field vector in general that can be broken, because you see wave is propagating in a direction the E field that is can have a two dimensional representation. So, usually we represent it with x and y. So, in general this electric field vector will be having an x component and also a y component. So, in general the locus that it will trace as the time progresses if I stay at a particular point and see the electric field vector at that point over time I will see that the tip of that electric field vector is tracing a, a an ellipse special cases of that 
sometimes this ellipse becomes a circle that time we call it a circular polarization sometimes that ellipse becomes a line that time we call it a linear polarization. Now, the E field vector when it traces an ellipse, what is an ellipse? This is an ellipse. Now, as time progresses, I can the electric field vector T, suppose this is the T of electric field vector, these are all electric field vector with time. So, you see in this case, it is tracing an ellipse in a clockwise direction. I can also have a case where so this is a ellipse. So, that means I will show that this is a clockwise, this is an anti clockwise. So, this gives us the sense. So, this one is called C w clockwise sense, this is called C C w counter clockwise sense. Now, sometimes the C w is called right hand polarization. right hand polarized wave and C C w is left hand polarized wave. For obvious reasons you see that C w means right hand and this C w is left hand this is a nomenclature, but the more important is this clockwise counter clockwise. Now, what we require for our things is as I was saying that most general description of an instantaneous E field will be something we know that if anything is a field it should have I mean a field and wave it should have a time function as well as a space function. So, E j t. So, this can be if I say that I will have x and y component any two dimensional component. So, I can the instantaneous E field of a plane wave traveling in a please remember this discussion is traveling in a minus z direction can be written as E x z t A x plus E y z t A y in the Cartesian coordinates A x y are unit vectors and E x is the amplitude of the x component of the field, E y is the amplitude of the y component of the field and time phase of this E x component or I will write it like this because there are also uh, the time phase. Let us also say that, so I will write like this, the amplitude of E x is E x amplitude of E y is E y time phase of E x is phi x time phase of E y 
is phi y. So, can I write what is this phasor E x? It is the real part of E x e to the power j k z because it is a wave going into minus z direction minus j k z plus phi x e to the power j omega t and what is the e y phasor? It is real e y e to the power j k z plus phi y e to the power j omega t. So, I can just write E x is nothing but E x cos k z plus cos omega t plus k z plus phi x and d y is E y cos omega t plus k z plus phi y. Now, for the wave to be linear polarized, what I demand? The time phase difference between the two components must be an integral multiple of pi. That means, what I want is del phi which is nothing but phi y minus phi x that should be n pi n is integer. This is called linear polarization for circular polarization what I demand. that E x magnitude and E y magnitude to be same. Also, I want time phase difference is odd multiples of pi by 2. So, that means, this means I want phi x uh, phi y minus phi x is equal to 2 n plus 1 pi by 2 uh, sorry, 2 n plus 2 n odd multiples of pi by 2. So, I can write 2 n plus half into pi n is equal to 0, 1, 2, etcetera for C w and minus 2 n plus half pi n is equal to 0, 1, 2, etcetera for C c w. Okay. You can simply do it actually in class 12 some of you may have done it and please remember that if the wave propagation direction is reversed that is instead of instead of wave propagation in minus z direction if I have z direction then these two will be opposite that means this will be C w this will be C C w. So, for circular polarization the important thing is magnitude of the two components should be same and time phase the time phase difference between the two components should be odd multiples of pi by 2. So, this is the demand for circular polarization and what is elliptical polarization? So, elliptical polarization means 
that magnitude wise magnitude wise I do not require any relationship. So, E x magnitude and E y magnitude no relation. And time phase difference. So, delta phi it may be odd multiples of pi by 2 or not odd multiples of pi by 2. That means, here also no difference that means, this was the most general case. Now, that if it becomes odd multiples and these two are equal that becomes circular, if the time phase difference become that odd multiple of a uh, sorry integral multiple of pi or you can say even multiple of pi by 2 then it is a linear etcetera. So, ultimately we can say that if this is our actual rectangular direction, but the ellipse may be having a tilt. So, this ellipse obviously, if this is larger this is called major axis of the ellipse that means, here to here and here to here it is called the minor axis of the ellipse. Now, this how much is this to actually you know that these two means what is the maximum of the E x component and what is the maximum of the E y component that ratio is an important characteristic thing of the polarization of the wave that ratio is called axial ratio axial ratio A r that is given as major axis by minor axis. So, if we say that this is O and this is A and this is let us say B. So, I can say it is O A by O B and generally this axial ratio will vary from 1 to infinity. Okay. So, this is the polarization of the wave if we understand that then we can understand that if for a transmitting wave it will be the antenna's polarization that means, the antenna is radiating a wave. So, in general the antenna will have elliptical polarization, but if the two radiated waves the x and y component they have this relationships then they may become circular or then they become. The so, now what is polarization loss factor? The polarization of the receiving antenna may not be the same as the polarization of the incident wave if they are equal that means, whatever the polarization of the incident wave and the antennas polarization that means, as a that as a transmitting antenna is polarization is same then this receiving antenna will be able to extract maximum power otherwise there will be a polarization mismatch. So, let us say that we have a incident wave. So, this is again I am discussing polarization loss factor already we have seen it in case of efficiency time. So, that suppose I write like this that A i is the unit vector in the direction of the incident E field 
and the polarization of the receiving antenna that is let us say E A. So, what is the unit vector A antenna? A antenna is a unit vector in the direction of the antenna polarization. Then what will be PLF? PLF will be simply the magnitude of these two directions called dot product antenna. You can say this square. So, if we draw that this is the a i vector and this is the a antenna vector then and this angle is phi p. So, I can write this is cos phi p square this is also a dimensionless quantity cos phi p. So, that means these two angles so, by that. So, now we can ask that if the antenna is polarization matched what will be the value of PLF that means in that case this angle will be 0. So, cos 0 is 1. So, we can say that matched case PLF is 1 and fully mismatched case that means orthogonal case PLF will be 0. So, what you can say? So, orthogonal PLF will be 0. Sometimes people say PLF dB. So, is log of this PLF. Now, here multiplier I will have to use 10 or 20, it is all power thing, that is why it is 10, 10 log 10. Now, this polarization loss factor is important for link budget calculations in space communication, radio astronomy etcetera, because this since they are having a very tough budget. So, this factor some cost theta thing that is important for them. So, that is why this also should be taken into account. Now, so we have seen in detail what is the polarization of the antenna, because a designer should be knowing what is exactly mean by polarization. Uh, then we will see that sometimes in the actually antenna is um, its design etcetera is completely different from any other uh, element that is in the uh, whole link, but when antenna should al always be either connected to the transmitter or to the receiver. Now, from if you look from the transmitter or look from the receiver, antenna is nothing but it should be characterized by an block who is doing something, he is radiating, etcetera, but to a transmitter it is it is taking some power and it is developing something. So, that means, anything in electronics, any two port network, we characterize it by an impedance. We do not characterize it by with voltage or do not characterize it by current, because those are our uh, excitation and effects etcetera, but the characteristic of the block that is the ratio of this voltage by current that is the impedance, because that does not change whatever voltage I give whatever current I give as long as that impedance is within the range of its validity the impedance uniquely characterizes the two port network. So, antenna also when a transmitter is looking at antenna it should be characterized by an impedance it may be a radiating device, but it is taking power. So, that time it should be behaving as an impedance. Similarly, when it is receiving it is taking the power, but finally it is delivering it to a load that load may be a spectrum analyzer that load may be simply a 
resistor that load may be simply an inductor anything. So, that time it should also be described by a impedance. So, that that means ultimately here you see when we analyze the antenna it is a completely field theory concept. We have seen in case of current element how we solve Maxwell's equations to find out what is the E H etcetera. But then from there you have seen that we were able to find out how much power etcetera it was giving and ultimately we could see that okay, a current element what is this radiation resistance. That means, we again could relate that field theory thing to a lower level theory called circuit theory that it is also a radiation what is taking place we have modeled it as, an, as a resistance. So, now we should be able to model this whole thing also we have seen that near the antenna there is a field which is not propagating it is a reactive field that means it should be characterized by some reactants. So, there are rea also we have seen that there are losses in the antenna etcetera. So, there is a lossy resistance also. So, lossy resistance a radiating resistance then a reactance. So, that means it is an it should be characterized by an impedance that is called input impedance of the antenna. And actually a transmitter looks at the input impedance because a transmitter knows that he will have to deliver the power, how much power he will deliver to it, how much of that will be used for, for that calculation we need to characterize the antenna by its input impedance. Similarly, in the receiver side ultimately receiver will have to know that I will have to extract power from the receiving antenna. So, what is the impedance of that antenna receiving antenna so that I can extract power. So, these are required and this will take up in the next class that what is the input impedance of the antenna and then we will see a concept which is required for receiving antenna that is the effective aperture of the antenna. So, that we can do all these calculations. So, that means we can now go at our will from field theory to circuit theory. So, that we can do the circuit problems microwave circuit problems also we will be able to find out what are the fields radiated by the antenna at any point in the whole universe what is the field that antenna gives that will come from field theory and knowing that field theory values we will be able to tell what are the impedances what are the uh, as the transmitter sees as the receiver sees. Thank you.